Hello and welcome to this lecture on Adobe Photoshop by Edgeonix. In this lecture we're going to be going over the liquify tool. Um, it's going to be a really short one. And I'll also go over the um, oil paint tool if my computer will let me. First, let's take a, look, take a look at Liquify. This uses graphics um, acceleration, so you don't need it for Liquify. Apparently, you need it for oil paint. I'm just going to hit OK because it'll still do what I want. And Liquify takes a lot of tools that you used to have in previous versions and puts them all in one thing. And I guess it's better for um, processing speed, but it's it's pretty handy for just about everything. You can make this guy look really cute you know, um, without really doing any kind of crazy editing. His forehead big. Um, so bloat is a really common one. If I just use bloat going down the line, and you can see what it does. If I center this right on a color, it makes that obviously the center of the bloat. I and mean, if I do it right here, it kind of pushes everything away. So cool stuff there. And if you're creating a lot of cool effects, then there are some tools like Twirl. And it says Twirl clockwise. Um, you have a lot of options here, though. So, so here I, I did. Uh, I chose a big one. Uh, some craziness happening right here. It's actually picking up this um, bloat isn't actually doing it to the image yet. It's, it's actually masked on there. Here are the basic uh, commands. So first we have show backdrop. It shows uh, two images. The one you just increased over top the previous one. And the same with show image. I can just go to the original image and just check that out at any time. And show mesh is pretty useful because you don't have to muddy everything up. You can just see the mesh that you've made. And here I am using the forward warp tool, which is kind of like smudge a little bit. But as you can see, it's taking this mesh and it's applying it to the image behind it. So it's really useful in that respect. And that's the normal. So here we have some mask options. So as far as the mask, I have show mask on right now. I'm going to make it blue. I don't know why. I'm magenta. Who cares? And I'm going to say mask all. And from that, I can take the fall mask option, which is just another way of saying erase the mask. And I can apply it um, very specifically. Small amounts or in really large amounts. And it won't uh, do anything over this. And you can see that. the mask, the actual parts of the mask are not being affected. And this is important. I could take the this uh, chimpanzee, I think it is, and do a mask around his whole body. And if I wanted to just work on the background, I could invert that. And now those little spots won't be affected. And then there's some Pathfinder-esque style and by the way, your history works in this. You just don't see it over here. 
if you hold in Control or Command, Alt or Option, and I say or for Mac, and Z, you'll go through back through your history layers. So that is what the freeze mask, and if you were wondering, this just draws a mask, and that is freeze. This is thaw, but really this is just brushing your mask on, and this is brushing a mask off. So trying to get confused there. Um, hand tool obviously is, is for moving around an image. If you have a big image, that's taking more space. In this case, it's not, but if, it, if my window were only this big, I could use the hand tool to move it around, it's just like the regular hand tool. No explanation required. We have the push left tool. And pay attention to what the grid is doing when I'm doing this. It's kind of a hard one to control, but it's going to make it run away from the cursor essentially. I could give him a spiky haircut. Kind of a tool I, I don't use a lot in liquify. And pucker is obviously the opposite of bloat. I mean, his eyes really small. Also, another way of making him look cute, I suppose. Makes him look a little older. Um, let's take a look at the reconstruct tool. The reconstruct tool will bring my image right back to normal. As you can see, it going over the mesh. It's putting the mesh back to where it was even this crazy bloat I did earlier and that's why liquify tool is so great is because there's pretty much no need for history with the reconstruct tool so I can make him totally back to normal or I can use a mask and I'll make parts of him back to normal Let's take a look at the smooth tool. The smooth tool is subtle, but what it's doing is if you were to zoom in on these and see the actual mesh points, it's smoothing out the actual lines just like the smooth tool in Illustrator if you're familiar with that. So if you're getting a lot of distortion, pixelation, a lot of crazy looking things, maybe run the smooth tool over it a few times. Now if you had the previous Photoshop, you'd notice there's some things that are actually missing. Um, you don't have those options like the uh, patch tool I think is called. But with the other tools like a stamp tool and stuff in the regular Photoshop that we don't need it. So I'm going to hit OK and it'll apply my changes. It's one history state so I can always go back and you know pretty much a lot of tools overlap purposes. I can select the smudge tool and I can repaint the eyes for the history brush. Now it looks a little wonky. But if I go into preferences, and we're going to look at the oil painting tool here, and I go to um, performance, and if this doesn't make my computer freeze, I'm going to select use graphics processor. Say so just normal. Hopefully this won't make it freeze. If it does, that'll be the end of the video. I'm gonna go to filter oil paint. Now it's letting me in. So what this did initially is it just took the oil paint and took kind of the directions that it detected. But the reason why I like this one, aside from the other SVG filters, is because it's not just blindly applying a filter. 
it's interpreting things in the background and it's applying them. It actually almost looks like an oil painting. If I slide the stylization, I can get a lot of different effects. Um, I can obviously do this, hit OK, and then go into... And I like to usually take the shine almost all the way down. It's still, it's hard to tell, but it still has an oil painting texture to it. So when I hit OK, you know, it gives it that almost drawn look versus the original where you can still see the hairs and stuff. And this one, this one, the monkey looked a lot better. But anyway, that's the oil paint tool. It requires graphics processing. Um, just for my purposes, I haven't figured it out why, but I have to, I have to keep it off. Typically, because it'll, it can crash, it can interfere with programs and stuff. But that's the oil paint tool. And there's a lot of uh, other tools up here we'll get into in another lesson, but um, that's about it for, for those two. Definitely get into Liquify um, when you need to make any of these changes and smudge isn't doing it for you. Um, use the Liquify tool. Same with oil paint, don't discount it. It has a lot of practical purposes, even though it's uh, one of the automatic kind of filters. It's not like the SVG filters, it's a lot more interactive. And it gives you a lot better results in my opinion. So that about does it, and thanks for watching, and continue to practice as much as you can.